I went out intentionally to shoot a scene that would allow me to show people that ETTR, exposed to the right, actually does work. Mm -hmm. So this was shot on an auto bracket, up and down, one and two-thirds stop, and then normal. So let's see what this looks like. Here is the histogram and camera raw of what the underexposed image looks like. And you can see that it's the mass of the image is down low. That's exposed to the left. That's exposed to the left. Mm -hmm. Correct. Here is the, the middle exposure, which arguably, and this was an auto exposure, I did an auto mm -hmm. bracket, is arguably underexposed. There's still some black yeah, clipping going on. There's some on. black clipping, but, and you've got a little bit of room over here mm -hmm. in the highlights. Mm -hmm. Well, cameras have this tendency of being conservative. Um, many of the digital SLR cameras have a conservative factor in when they're showing the flashing for clipping up to a stop. But can I also tell you part of the problem is the manufacturers expose the shot so that the shot will look good on the LCD on the back of the yes. camera. Yeah. Not, and you know that. Yeah. It's not so that it's exposed optimally, it's so that it's exposed to look pretty. Yeah, film-like. Yeah, well, yeah. exactly. People want the image on the LCD to look like a transparency. Yeah. Hold on, go, oh, that's perfect, that's lovely. But it's not. Yeah. It's usually underexposed by anywhere from two-thirds of a stop to a stop and a half. So here is the plus one and two-thirds. And example, you look at that on the back of the LCD and it looks Too white. bright. Yeah, uh -huh. it's too bright. Because it's not normalized. Mm -hmm. And then here's what the histogram is. Mm -hmm. In camera raw, this is showing clipping. And that's something that you have to get over. It's really what it's doing is clumping, not clipping. Mm -hmm. There is nothing in here that was so bright that it would clip at the sensor. And it, not, nothing there is at 255. Correct. So the three exposures, I can successfully normalize them in camera raw or Lightroom. Okay, so what you've done with each of these is you've made them look as normal yes, as, as possible. Yes, close to each other yeah. as possible. And from here, it looks and at this side, it looks fine. You could have been off by a stop or two and still have uh, you yeah. know, a reasonable on-screen image, at least. So here is the minus one and two-third, and you can see that the redistribution of the data is up the scale to lighten the image. Mm -hmm. Here is the normal exposure that I've lightened a bit, and the thing that's kind of interesting is that here are the two mm -hmm. histograms, one from the minus one two-thirds and <laughs> one from the normal, and they look very similar. That's amazing. So then here is the normalized up one and two-thirds, and you'll see all the clipping is gone. Mm -hmm. So and then, just let me interject for a second, because one of the things that always annoys me, and I like jabbing the manufacturers when they don't do things the way they should, Video cameras, you can set the clipping point. Mm -hmm. You can say you want it at 80, 90, 100, 110, depending on what you need. Stills cameras, mm -hmm. even the high-end Nikons and Canons, you can't. Why not? If you can do it on a $1,000 video camera, why can't you do it on a $7,000 DSLR? Makes no sense to me. It's a good point, and I'd keep hammering away, and maybe someday... Whack, whack, yeah. whack. Okay. So then here's the question. Is it worth it to do the exposed to the right? Clearly the, the one that was up one and two thirds has been now normalized to look like the normal exposure, mm -hmm. but is there any benefit? Gee, Dr. Just, Science, why don't you show us? Okay. So here is the noise mm -hmm. of the minus one and two thirds normalized. So I've brought up the lightness of the shadow. This is your underexposed shot underexposed. brought up into the mid-range. Mm -hmm. Now you're at what, about 300%? Yes, yeah. uh, it is actually 300%. Mm -hmm. Here is the normal exposure, and it actually has been lightened, mm -hmm. so it's suffering from a little bit of noise blooming, mm -hmm. not bad. Mm -hmm. 
And here is the image that is exposed to the right. Mm -hmm. No noise reduction. And as Perry Mason would say, I rest my case. No, it's, it's totally convincing. Yeah. Because the signal to noise ratio up on the right side of the histogram in the highlights mm -hmm. is dramatically better than the signal to noise ratio in the shadows. Yeah. And the analogy that I used to teach is uh, imagine photographing a black cat sitting on a pile of coal and a white cat sitting in the snow. And you point your meter at both of them and they'll both give you a gray cat sitting on gray something. <laughs> but what you want to do is you want to expose the white cat sitting in the snow to the right and you want to expose the black cat sitting on the coal to the right as well. Mm -hmm. Because then you can bring your slider down and move that black cat and so it looks like a black cat instead of a very light gray cat. But you've put all the data for that shot into the highlight area, which mm -hmm. is low noise. Mm -hmm. So this is just, you know, it, and I have to say this, not every shot demands ETTR. No. But if you have a shot that is something like a black cat sitting on a pile of coal, you definitely want to do it. And if you have stuff that's lots of medium grayish without a lot of real highlights, shove it over to the right. Mm -hmm. The key is to know what the scene contrast range is and to know what the dynamic range of your sensor is. So a lot of it is dependent upon the dynamic range of the scene and the sensor. If the scene is within the dynamic range of the sensor, mm -hmm. yes, move it to the right. You won't overexpose, you won't clip. And that, by the way, is one of the advantages of the latest generation of cameras. Because when we started with DSLRs around the time of your 10D, mm -hmm. you know, back in the early 2000s. Maybe um, six stops. Maybe, you know, five, six stops. Uh, less than transparency film. Yeah. Uh, now, the better cameras are up around 10, 11 stops, and uh, medium format backs in 16-bit mode are up in the 12, 13 stop range. Mm -hmm. Some would claim higher, but no need to quibble over that. Yeah. It's, it's well over 10 stops. Yeah. So the bottom line is, if you know that the, and you can kind of check on the back of the camera, mm -hmm. do chimping. <laughs> um, you do that really well. Yeah. <laughs> I chimp a lot. <laughs> I actually had a class and I made them put black photo tape on the LCD. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of freaked them out because they were so used to looking yeah, at the... I know. But check the dynamic range. I have at times carried a spot meter mm -hmm. so that I could see the brightest area mm -hmm. that I want texture yeah. and the deepest area that I want to have texture. And then... If, it, if the dynamic range of the scene is beyond the dynamic range of the sensor, then you have to do one of a couple of things. Either decide aesthetically what is more important and let the other blow, blow out the highlights or let the shadows fill, mm -hmm. or resort to HDR. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the demo that we're gonna do next. Mm -hmm. Okay. The only question I wanted to ask before we do that is whose white cat did you throw out in the snow? <laughs> this is a hypothetical white cat. Okay, but you're a dog lover. You don't. I'm really a dog lover. I wouldn't put my dog out in the snow. Yeah. Well, I would actually. They love being in the snow. Yeah. All Cats, right. not Come so on. much. Let's let's do HDR. Okay. <laughs> 